Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jay and we're finally doing the pantry tour. I've been really looking forward to it, but I've also been, I don't know, just kind of not in the right headspace for it and I finally am. So I'm excited to show you guys my pantry. I'm also going to be showing you my freezer. I know a lot of people film those separately, but the whole point of me showing you guys these things um, is to show you realistically what it looks like for a first time, a first year homesteader. I have only been actively trying to put up food um, and create kind of a working kitchen, stocked up pantry, freezer situation um, for a year, pretty much since January and it's November. Um, and so this is what I've managed to pull off in a year, a little less than a year. Um, I did the garden. It was um, a reasonably sized garden for just my husband and I on our quarter acre. I'm going to do more next year. Um, and it's been really interesting to see what I can accomplish with the space that I have. And I know that I'll be able to accomplish even more next year. So I'm really excited to show you my pantry. We're going to start with my canned goods. I've got them on the shelf covered with this beautiful shower curtain. Um, because you want to keep your canned goods um, away from direct sunlight in a cool, dark place, and that's really ideal for keeping them preserved as long as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and take down the shower curtain. I'm so excited. A lot of hard work went into this, so I'm really excited to be showing you guys. Ta-da! <laughs> this is it, you guys. So I want to pull my table over here really quick so I can pull some things out and have somewhere to set them. Got my table. So we're gonna start, well, first of all, I'll point out that on the very top here, which you can't even see it, on the very top, I've got extra vinegar, uh, white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, extra lemon juice, canning salt, things like that, those kinds of supplies up top here. On this second shelf here, these are all of my dried, dehydrated um, products. So I'm gonna go ahead and start going through them. These are, <laughs> I did not really do a lot with my calendula this year. I have just a little bit, and it's actually for the chickens. If you give um, your chickens calendula heads, it actually helps make their yolks really orange, which if you're free ranging your chickens, they'll be orange anyway, but it's a little fun fact for you. I've got some extra honey. Here I have my jar of dried basil. I've got two jars of dried oregano. These are um, tomato skins that I dried during one of the times I was canning tomatoes. I have two jars of roasted pumpkin seeds. Here are some dried hibiscus flowers. I did not make these myself, I bought them, but I still put them in a cute jar, of course. Here I have dried sweet mint for my tea. I have um, dried chamomile, and this is all I have to get me through. <laughs> I, I ration it out. Anytime I make a cup of tea and I want chamomile in it, I put three little flower heads in it <laughs> because I want the chamomile and I want the benefits of it, but I, I have so little of it left. I'm going big on the chamomile in 2023. I'm growing all the chamomile. I love it so much. I have just a little bit of dehydrated um, onion and I just left it in somewhat big chunks. I like to put this in like pastas and on pizza and stuff. Don't have a whole lot of that left. Um, I have some dehydrated red raspberry leaves. These are, um, and I'm gonna have lots of content in the future on herbal teas, the various um, uh, plants you can grow for herbal tea and their benefits. Red raspberry leaves are excellent for relieving um, menstrual cramps, and they are, it's true, <laughs> which is amazing to me. Don't have a whole lot of those either. Um, what is this? Oh, this is leftover um, oregano and basil. It was what was left at the end of the season when I pulled the plants up. Um, the bits and pieces that weren't like really pretty looking for what I put up and I'm going to give it to the chickens. So that's two things now that I've put aside for the chickens. Um, just a really cute extra container. It's good to know. Here I have two jars of dehydrated um, cherry tomatoes. I considered putting up some for myself, but I, I don't know if I would really like them very much. So I actually put those up for the chickens to give to them as well. Um, also for the chickens, I have... These are dehydrated um, 
Banana peppers, the very last of the banana peppers at the end of the season, I went ahead and dehydrated them. I think they're so pretty. Hang on, I wanna show you guys a little bit better. Look how cute. I just think that's so pretty. And they also, they smell really good. Yeah, oh man, those smell so good. They're also for the chickens. I love giving them peppers. Here I have pineapple mint, also for tea. So these so far are my tea items over here. I have what's left of my dehydrated apple rings. I'm probably gonna do, I have a few apples left. I'll probably just fill that back up. Here I have the um, fruit leather, the apple, apple pie fruit leather that we made together in a previous video. The little tiny bit of strawberry mint that I have left. It's so good, I don't have much left. I have um, dehydrated peach peels that I've been using for tea. Um, and then I, I have some walnuts in here. Should probably put those in the kitchen. And these are the um, apple peels that we sprinkled in cinnamon sugar and put in the oven. And I've been munching on those, you can tell, and they're really good. And lastly, just in this bowl, I have some um, dehydrated rosemary. Oh, it smells so good. I need to get it in a container. And yeah, so I've got a few things here for the chickens. These are miscellaneous things, um, herbs and different snacky things. And then over here, I've got quite a bit of tea product that I use because I drink tea every single day. So I've got that stuff over here. And that is the, and those are all of my dehydrated, dried, roasted products. And I keep all of those on this shelf here. So here are the dried goods that we just talked about. Moving down a shelf, we're gonna start getting into the canned goods and I'm gonna go through them row by row. Here we've got some tomato sauce. This one is, um, the recipe called it a seasoned sauce, and I made that in September. And then moving back, we've got basil garlic tomato sauce. I did that in October, and that's what this is. Um, this was just some homemade hot sauce that one of my neighbors gave me. I've got some salsa verde here in this row, and then I have salsa here in this row, salsa here, and um, ooh, and then here I have, right next to it, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. These are banana rings, banana pepper rings that I canned. Um, <laughs> here I have tomato soup, which I was incredibly proud of. I love, love tomato soup. Tom and I both do. I was incredibly, incredibly proud of that. I only have four jars of it. Next year we're going to make a lot more. And then here I have pasta sauce. And I was really excited to show this to you guys because this was my very first thing that I canned this year in 2022. And it was my very first time canning um, any kind of tomato product. And look at how ugly it is. It is so dang ugly. And when you compare that to, the, uh, let's do the basil garlic tomato sauce. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in that. That is butt ugly, and that is gorgeous, beautiful, thick, well-seasoned sauce. No seeds, no skin. I put this through my food mill. This one has everything in it. And you know what's funny about that? What I love about this is that that is just proof that the only way to learn is to just do it. And I'm still really proud of this, and I'm still going to use it. Actually, um, Heidi made some eggplant parmesan using this and it was delicious. It's not really a great consistency for pasta like I originally intended it to be. It's pretty chunky, but if you're gonna put it on like chicken parm or eggplant parm or something like that, maybe uh, meatball subs or I don't know, something like that, it's fine and it tastes good. It's just not, it's not perfect. It's pretty ugly, it's pretty chunky. And it took me getting over that initial attempt to be like, okay, I kinda see how this works. And then from there, it just got better and better. And then here is this, so actually, here, I can show you my attempts. This is this is perfect. This is what I'll do. Let me see if I can put this one here without dropping any. So this, this one here was my very first attempt. This is sauce number one. This was sauce number two. This was my second attempt. And this is sauce number three. This is my third attempt. All of these are good, but you can see my progression in, in just appearance, in just how they look of how I improved, of how my skills improved as I as I practiced and did it more and more. This one is beautiful, gorgeous, delicious 
smooth, beautiful sauce. This one's really pretty too. Um, and, and I use my food mill for this one also, but I mean, look at the, the color difference in these two. And then again, this one was attempt number one. So the, all of this just to say, guys, just do it. You know, your first attempt is likely not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pretty, but it's still something to be proud of. And it's the experience that matters. It's getting in there and just giving it a shot because that's how you learn. And, and look, this is my progression in just a few months in one tomato season. And I grew all of these tomatoes. <laughs> it's a, it, that's awesome. That's awesome. And all the herbs in here, I grew those too. So, you know, just if you're nervous or if you're not sure, um, you know, if you're going to be successful, it doesn't matter. Just get in there and give it a shot. Just try. And so these, I think, are the last of the tomato products, the tomato soup and my, my first attempt at uh, sauce. And then over here, we've got pepper onion relish, um, zucchini relish, um, and then we have my vinegared red onions. And the, oh my gosh, these are delicious. So I tried to have all of my like vegetable-y, tomato-y stuff on one rack. And then when you look down to this rack, so up here we've got all those extra supplies I mentioned. These are my dried goods. These are my veggies and sauces and tomato products. And then down here, these are my fruit products. So these are the peaches. Um, Heidi and I helped my mom can this year over here I've got that blasted apple juice that was literally the bane of my existence we have those pears that we canned up over here we have um, oh Heidi canned this carrot cake jam I haven't tried it yet she said it was really good she gave me a couple jars um, I have apple preserves I have uh, where let's see more apple preserves these are all apple preserves apple preserves um this this is strawberry jam here um my mom canned that um and this is actually from 2021 i have two more 2021s that i really need to finish up and then oh and then here i've got let's see this is salted that salted caramel pear butter that we made in october that's what all of these are this is the new strawberry jam from this year we love strawberry jam and then I have um, some random assorted things. Um, Heidi gave me this, orange plum jam, um, raspberry apple. Heidi like went crazy with the jams this year. Uh, let's see, pineapple mango, yum. Oh, that one looks really yummy. And, and then this one I bought at the um, farmer's market. Heavenly rhubarb jam, cool. So yeah, this, this one, has a lot of jams, a lot of butters, um, fruit preserves, um, whole or like, you know, sliced, chunked fruit. So there's that. And then down here I have these, this is the very bottom. Those are the rest of the pears that I really need to use up. Oh, that one looks like it's rotten. Uh, not yet. This is just really, really ripe. So I do, I need to get to these ASAP. I've got a few apples left. I think I'm just going to make more rings. And then these are, um, this is my onion storage. So teensy tiny compared to some other people's onion storages, but that's what I've got. Okay, and then lastly for food storage, these are the two racks that Tom um, installed for me. And right now I'm using them for, um, I've got a few plants. This is, <laughs> this tree, bush shrub. It was actually at our wedding and it was teensy tiny. I got it, we got married um, December of last year. 2021 and so that was around Christmas time and so I got this at Walmart and it was supposed to be like a little tiny mini Christmas tree and we had it um, on the table with our cake and um, it's pretty big now but it was looking a little rough so I up potted it trimmed out all the dead stuff and it's got a lot of new growth up at the top here I'm really trying to keep it alive because wherever we end up buying is our forever property I really want to plant it there and have it because I just think that's really romantic this is um, a huge rosemary plant that my neighbor gave me. Um, I um, took it out of her raised garden bed and put it in a pot and brought it inside and it's doing really, really well. I'm gonna see if I can keep it going, hopefully all winter, but it makes this room smell so good. I love the smell of rosemary. And then these are my two elderberry bushes that I showed you guys. And I'm just keeping them indoors during the winter time. Um, so these won't be here for forever. They're just here take, taking advantage of the light that comes in through the window during the winter time. Um, but down here I have um, garlic. 
I've got a decent amount of garlic. I didn't grow any of it. I got it all at various farmer's markets at various times. It's not all the same variety. Um, these were some of my little baby onions that didn't really take off. Um, but I will still eat them. So they're just hanging out in here until I need them. Oh, this one sprouted. Um, yeah, so those are hanging out in here. I've got a couple butternut squash, a couple pumpkins, well, a few pumpkins. And then in here, I'm so excited. I've almost collected a dozen eggs from my girls. One more. And I haven't gotten any yet today, so I'm sure I'll fill this today. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Obviously, it's the winter time, but it's their first year. So I've been told by multiple people that they'll lay at least sporadically throughout the entire winter time with it being their first year. Um, and two out of my five girls are laying currently, so I'm getting anywhere from one to two eggs a day right now. I think two of the others are pretty close to laying, and one of them doesn't look like she's going to lay anytime soon. Um, so, you know, I'm just kind of collecting the eggs and keeping them in here. They're good at room temperature as long as you don't wash them for, I don't know, up to three months, right? Um, and so I'm just kind of hanging on to them. I'm still buying store eggs. Um, and I want to try to get ahead on them because if there is ever a time in the next few months where I'm getting five eggs a day or even four eggs a day, that's more than I eat in a day. So I'll be in the positive on them. Does that make sense? Like I'll be getting more than I'll use in that day. Whereas I eat without cooking or baking, I eat two eggs every single day of my life. I have two eggs for breakfast every day and I'm only getting one to two eggs. So until I'm receiving more, I want to just hang on to them so I have eggs in case I don't know if something happens or I need eggs, whatever. Um, yeah, so this is it for in here. Um, I will very briefly show you my closet storage. There's no food in there, but I'll show you kind of what I'm looking at with jars and whatnot. But I do just want to say something really quickly. This entire top row I have available because I could put these anywhere. They're just here because I like the window. Um, and then the other half of this rack from the eggs on is available. And I... The way that I look at it is this. My goal is to fill all available space with food, homegrown or locally grown, um, home canned, jarred, dehydrated, roasted, what have you, food. Um, and I, you know, I've talked a lot about being a good steward of my space, being a good steward of my home, being a good steward of the resources that I've been given here on this property. And I have said before in a previous video, the video where I, I put this room together, I said, how can I expect God to bless me with more when I can't even take care of what I have now, right? And I stand behind that. Um, I feel a similar way with this, with my food storage. A little different though, um, I, I feel like before I can expect him to bless me with bigger space, more space, I need to fill the space that I have. And you know, I'm a firm believer that God always provides and he has provided. And I have all of this empty space, all this beautiful space that I'm ready to pack full of fresh homegrown, home canned food. And so I, my goal for next year, for the 2023 gardening and, and farming season, is to fill these two shelves full of food. And then, and then obviously the shelf too, because we'll consume a lot of this over the winter time, hopefully almost all of it over the winter time. Um, and so I want to fill this back up and I want to fill these two shelves because God always provides, right? And so once I'm to the point where I no longer have space for what is being produced, only then can I start to think, wow, okay, I really need more space. Like I need a bigger kitchen. I need more space to can store, uh, store canned goods and things like that. So that's kind of how I've been looking at it. You know, I definitely have a lot of, I have all the trust in the world in God and his plan for me, but I also feel like God helps those who helps themselves. And I just want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to be a good steward of what I have now so that when the time comes and I am blessed with bigger and more, I, I, and I know that God doesn't necessarily need this from me. This is more a me thing. I want to feel like I deserve it. I want to feel like I earned it. You know what I mean? Um, and I know that that's not necessarily biblical, but that's just a me thing. You know, I want to take full advantage of everything I have now so that I'll be the best equipped I can be in the future. Um, you know, like I said, when I do have, a, let's say, a huge 
you know, root cellar or something along those lines to fill. Let's let's fill this first and and you know grow our skills and develop you know new new skills and, and and try new recipes and grow new foods and let's do all of that now before we have the giant root cellar or the the giant downstairs shelving unit with you know yards of space to put canned goods and things like that so that was kind of my thought process and i just wanted to throw that out there and make a goal publicly for myself that in the 2023 gardening season i want to fill this shelf and i want to fill these two shelves here all with with homegrown or locally grown um, and, and preserved food as well as things like squashes and onions and, and garlic and things like that. So yeah, let me show you this closet and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the freezer. There's not a ton to see in here, but I did wanna show you quickly just in case, you know, especially if you didn't see my video where I showed you this room. I've got my food saver and my canner supplies up there. Here I've got extra jars. So I've got, let's see, this is, um, an unopened thing of pint jars. These are two unopened things of pint jars. Here I have um, an open but almost full thing of half pints, an unopened thing of half pints. And then over here, I've got just some miscellaneous um, jars. Like this is an old glass honey jar that I kept um, and, and things. This is, uh, this is an old coconut oil, but it's glass. And so I hang on to those things and have them over in that box. And then down here is where I keep, um, I've got some cheesecloth, some labels, um, various canning supplies, citric acid, some sure gel. These lids are amazing, by the way. I got these, oops. I got these at Walmart. These are really cool, reusable lids. I use them for my um, dried goods. And then just some other miscellaneous kitchen supplies in here. My apple peeler and I did retire the dehydrator for the winter season. I've got it down there, my roaster oven. So yeah, I love having this closet. Look, more space for me to put things. Yeah, I love having this closet. I love having the extra storage. It's excellent. All right, you guys, now we are downstairs. I've got my deep freezer right here. You can kind of see I've got my overflow stuff here. I might show you this at the end. We'll see. It's all store-bought stuff. Um, and honestly, I don't even really come down here that much anymore. Some of it's probably expired. But um, here's my deep freezer. I have a table here so that I can um, take everything out and show you in a nice organized way. I do have some gloves here because this, this stuff is cold. <laughs> it's real cold. So let's go through here. And just, I wanna show you kind of, just give you a gist of what I have going on in my deep freezer. Some of it's homegrown, some of it I bought from various farmer's markets, some of it's homemade, some of it's store-bought. I just kinda of wanna give you a gist, talk about some goals, and remember the point of this video is to show you realistically what the freezer and pantry of a first-year homesteader looks like. I want people to be able to set realistic goals both ways. I want you to be able to dream big, but I also want you to, to understand that if you don't do a lot, that's okay too. So I, I feel like I'm kind of in the middle. I didn't go crazy, but I have a bit for being my first year. So let's take a look in here. First of all, I want to point out, I don't, I don't think you can see it, but this is full up to the top. I mean, there's really no more room in here for me to put really anything. And I look at that as a bad thing. You really don't want your deep freezer to be too, too full. A, it's not good for the deep freezer. And B, it's hard to manage it. You, I, I'm not going to be able to remember everything that's in here. Um, and if I'm not able to conveniently look around, then I'm going to forget things. Things are going to get freezer burnt. Things are going to go bad. Um, I, I'm going to end up buying something at the store that I had in here all along. Things like that. So you really do want to have your freezer be a working freezer for your kitchen and constantly be rotating and working through the things that you have in there. Same with your pantry. So first of all, I'm going to pull out some flour here um, and a little funny story for you. These are 30 ounce bags of um, Azure all-purpose flour unbleached. I was not paying attention when I put that order in. I did it really quickly on my phone. And um, I thought I was buying 30 pounds of flour. And I was like, wow, what a great price for 30 pounds of flour. No, no, no. I bought four 30 ounce 
bags of flour, which is fine. I'll still use these. But uh, when I went to meet the truck to pick up my order and the only box that was on my name was this tiny little box, I was like, uh, that's not mine. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> so watch what you're doing, folks. Um, and then this is just all purpose flour. I think maybe from all these, that might be all the flour I have in here. I keep my flour in the freezer until it's time for me to use it because flour can have um, little larva in it, um, weedles and things like that. And putting it in the flour helps keep that down. So I keep them in the freezer until I'm ready to use them. I have got a couple store-bought loaves of bread. Um, I really, this winter, it's one of my goals to get in the habit of making my own bread. I want to make three or four loaves at a time, sandwich bread that is. Um, slice it up. I keep these bread bags when, as I use them. I have a whole stash of them, and I want to start keeping my own frozen bread in the freezer. Bread freezes great, and all I do is take it out, put it in the fridge. I keep my bread in the fridge, and I just use it as I need it, and it dethaws and keeps wonderfully in the fridge from being frozen. So I love that. I went through a waffle phase, so I have a big box of waffles that I have not been eating. This is fun. Are you guys ready for this? Not that. This is like just as, as embarrassing as it is funny. I think that's all of them. These are bags of frozen tomatoes. <laughs> all homegrown. These are all homegrown tomatoes. And as I would take them in from the garden, if I wasn't ready to do anything with them, I would put them in gallon bags and put them in the upstairs freezer. And as the upstairs freezer would become too full, I would take them and put them in the deep freezer. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight full gallon size bags of tomatoes to process this winter and get out of the pantry, which is great. We'll make pizza sauce, pasta sauce, whatever, um, and tomato soup, that'll be fine. So that's exciting, but you know, I give myself a little bit of credit. What I said earlier about my freezer being too full, a huge chunk of that is being taken up by frozen tomatoes. So that'll be really nice to get out of there. Um, and then here, these are homemade um, cookie dough, different types. I actually did a video making these. And I've just been slowly making two, three, four, five cookies at a time as we want cookies. You just pull out the little um, frozen dough balls and you just put them in the oven and bake them like you would normal. So I've got those in there. Here I have some apple butter cinnamon rolls. I made these one day and made enough to make two batches and put the other one in the freezer. That's really the best way to put up freezer meals. If you're going to be making something anyway, just make two and put one of them in the freezer. That's a really great way to um, up your freezer stores. And then here I've got some shredded cheese. My neighbor actually gave this to me and although I no longer buy shredded cheese from the store, um, I'm never gonna say no to somebody giving me free shredded cheese. So that's cool. All right, before we get into the bottom, that's pretty much everything off the top layer here. I do have, these are frozen coffee ice cubes. On Sunday, Tom and I, I make a big pot of coffee that Tom and I drink on throughout the day together. And if there's ever anything left over, I put it in an ice cube tray and freeze it. So I've got a big bag of frozen coffee ice cubes and I use them when I make white Russians, when I make iced coffee. Um, they're just really great to have if you're going to make a cold coffee drink instead of putting water ice cubes and watering it down. I have coffee ice cubes. So just a little tip for you there, which this is, that came open. Um, all right, so I'm going to move the tomatoes off to the side here to make some room. Now, there is one freezer tip that I can give you that is not original to me. I got this from Becky at Acre Homestead, and I thought it was a really great idea for lumping like things together in the freezer. So that way, if you're looking for one particular item, if it's very similar to another particular item, instead of digging through everything, I've got like things lumped together into bags. So let me give you an example of that. This is my meat bag. So right on top here, I've got salmon fillets, I've got chicken, I've got sausage, um, uh, more chicken, chicken breasts, more, let's see, this is ground turkey, 
right here. I'm not going to go through this entire bag, but this is my meat bag. And so all of the freezer meat that I have down here, because I do keep some freezer meat upstairs and accessible, um, but all the overflow bulk meat I keep down here in the deep freezer in this bag. And it's very easy for me, you know, if I am looking for uh, a package of ground turkey or a package of chicken breast or salmon, I know that it's in this bag. And instead of having to dig through everything, I can just take this bag out. Still have to take some things out. Like I would have still had to have taken the tomatoes out to get to this bag because this bag was on the bottom. But it's just a lot easier to know the ground turkeys in this bag, you know? And it would work a lot better if my freezer was not incredibly overfilled um, to be able to access those items. Another example of that in here, I have, um, these are store-bought fruits and vegetables, and I had enough of them to justify giving it its own bag. I've got a lot of these steamable broccoli and rice. Um, I've got some bagged broccoli florets. I've got a bag of frozen strawberries here. And so um, we do, we used to eat these a lot. We haven't really been eating them lately, but I don't want to waste them. So I know that they're in here. So there's a bag. And then I've got one more bag. Oh. This is the exciting bag. This is the bag that I'm really proud to show you. This bag is all of the homegrown or at least locally purchased fruits and vegetables that I preserve using my food dehydrator. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of those out and categorize them and show you exactly what I, as a first year homesteader, ended up with in my deep freezer this year. All right, so here it all is. I'm just gonna go through it. I have two, um, two things of pears um, and I think I have three pairs in each one here, I'm pretty sure. And I'll be able to use these if I wanted to make like um, like a pear tart or um, a pear crumble or something like that. I only ended up with one big bag of frozen corn. This was my very first time preserving corn um, in this way. And um, I'll end up using this when I make like barbecue chicken sandwiches or something like that. Here, <laughs> this was really fun for me. These are my peppers. These are all homegrown bell peppers. And um, I preserved a lot of them in larger quantities like this. This would be really great if I was making a huge uh, batch of spaghetti or lasagna or something like that. This would be about the amount of peppers I would want to put in there. So I've got several of, let's see, I've got four of those. And then these ones are a little bit smaller. And then these ones are even smaller. Look at this cute little snack packs of bell peppers. I think they're so cute. I've got two of these. The reason I have small ones is because on Sunday, Sunday morning is mine and Tom's like chill time together. And I always make a, a yummy breakfast, coffee, and we sit and hang out in the living room, listen to music and just spend time together. Um, and so I like to make us omelets or um, if I were to be making a frittata or something like that, a quiche, I could throw these little snack packs in there instead of having to open up one of these big ones and have half of it in the fridge for who knows how long. I can just have these cute little snack packs and um, I don't know, I was just trying different things out. Kind of the whole, the whole point is I'm trying to think forward and think, how am I going to use this in the future? And off of that, what is the best way to preserve these items to make that as easy and as efficient and um, provide the least amount of waste, really? Um, so that's kind of what I was trying to do there. Here I have my homegrown zucchini. All of this is homegrown. And this I labeled in, uh, this one I labeled in cups. So three cups, um, four cups. This one says two large zucchini, um, four cups two cups, two cups. So like the four cup zucchini um, would be excellent if I were to make a couple loaves of zucchini bread or a couple batches of chocolate chip zucchini muffins per se. Um, and I could eat half, freeze half, eat half, give half away, bring all of them to work, um, you know, something like that. So I went ahead and froze those mostly in cups. I obviously didn't feel like measuring the one that just said zucchini, but um, here I've got blueberries. Didn't grow these. Um, I took you guys along the day that I picked these. And um, I did not put any sort of measurement on these. And I don't remember now how many cups 
So that's why you have to label things in case, because you're probably not going to remember. But um, these would be excellent. I actually have a recipe coming for these. I already kind of know what, at least what I want to make with one of these, and I have a video planned for that. So I have a really yummy middle of winter blueberry recipe for you. Um, because again, I not only want to teach you how to put up the food, I want to teach you how to use the food we're putting up. So I do have recipes for a lot of this that I will be showing you. Lastly, I have some green beans here. Um, and actually, I thought I had a lot more than this. I'm really like, where did my green beans go? Maybe I have some in the upstairs freezer. Freezer. Here are some, here are some, and then here's another one that got, um, clearly it lost its seal somehow. I must not have sealed it properly. Um, but they still look okay and they're not that old. So I will probably just cook with these this week or maybe next week um, and use those up. So I'm glad I saw that. So yeah, this all came out of that bag. And so if I came down here and was like, I need some zucchini, I'm going to make some zucchini bread. I know exactly where in the freezer it is. And I, at this point, at least, I know exactly how much of each thing I have. So this is really excellent and I'm really excited and proud to have all of this in my um, freezer. I, I guess I grew the zucchini, I grew the bell peppers, and I grew the green beans. I did not grow the blueberries, the corn, the pears, or the potatoes. But, you know, you do what you can. And all of those that I did not grow, I sourced locally here in my city. So, um, yeah, really proud of this. I'm going to get it put back, and then we'll move on. We're almost done. There's not that much left in there. Next up, we do have some store-bought items. I have some onion rings, some um, cheddar pierogies, a big, huge bag of tater tots. Um, some dinner rolls, you know, just some basic store-bought things that I probably got them on sale and just wanted to have them. Two other items that I really like keeping in my freezer are milk and orange juice. Um, milk freezes really well right in the container it comes in, the little plastic container. I often buy half gallons because it's just Tom and I and we don't usually go through a gallon before it expires, so to be responsible I try to always get half gallon so we don't waste it. And then I, I'm an orange juice drinker. I, if Tom probably has a glass here and there, but I love orange juice in the morning with my breakfast. And so I like to keep some in the freezer. And then the very last thing that I will show you before I start putting all of this back, there's a couple more things in here that there's, let's see, I've got half a box of Hot Pockets in here. Um, one container of ready to bake pie crusts. Nothing really crazy, but this, I have this thing in here, this like wire shelf that sits on the top. And so I do put things in here that I access regularly that aren't big so that I, you know, don't have to dig around for it. So I do keep my butter and I, I already know I'm really low on butter. Oh, there was another loaf of bread in there. I did not know that. So this is what I have in the way of butter. Salted, 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 salted. I don't have any unsalted at all. I'm totally out of unsalted. Um, and then I got these guys from Azure in my last order. And it's um, a European organic salted butter, half one half pound, and I bought three of them. So that's all I have in the way of butter. That's not good. I am really low on butter. That's terrible. Um, I have a couple tubes of breakfast sausage, pork sausage, and bacon, one thing of bacon, and then I keep my cheeses on the top there. And yeah, like I said, I keep those things up top there because I usually access them somewhat often, so I like to be able to just grab them, especially the butter, I'd say more than anything, and I don't want to have to dig around for it. So there you go. That's my freezer. Um, it's not bad. I'm actually, now that I have everything out and I'm really looking at it, I think I'm doing pretty good. Like it's pretty organized. It's cleaned out. There's nothing in here. I don't think that's expired. I'm going through it. I'm pretty aware of what's in there and I'm working through it. So the only thing I would say is I definitely need more butter for sure. Um, I could, I would like to have maybe four more of, four more milks. Um, and I, you know what, as I'm, I'll actually keep one of these, take one of these upstairs with me. I just put it in the fridge and let it dethaw on its own in the fridge. Have you maybe noticed what's missing out of my freezer that I'm actually really not very excited about? Um, that's pre-made meals. Uh, there are none. I have my apple butter, butter cinnamon rolls and my pre-made cookie dough 
and that's it. I don't have one single pre-made meal in my freezer and I don't upstairs either. So it's definitely on my list, um, probably next week, um, to get some pre-made meals made and in the freezer. I'm going to film it. I already have a list of recipes set aside. Um, for that and we need to get some we need to get some in the freezer because this is great I'm really happy with all the stuff that I have but everything still needs to be cooked except for obviously the purchased items but um, you know ever all the all the vegetables and fruits that I showed you all of the meat that I have over here all of it still needs to be prepared and you know when it's the middle of the week and I'm tired and I'm working a lot I don't want to do that that's the whole point of pre-made meals is that I'm able to put a healthy home cooked meal on the table even if I prepared it you know at, on a different day so that's definitely coming up because that that needs to happen but overall I think I'm doing pretty well here so I just wanted to kind of go through and show you both my pantry and my freezer and kind of show you realistically what a first year homesteaders supplies look like because again this is the very I was living just like everybody else before last year I was eating out I was grocery shopping week to week sometimes I was going to the grocery store more than once in a week um, definitely very reliant on the food chain um, was not eating very healthy was not being very intentional um, with what we were putting in our bodies when we were putting it in our bodies um, I was cooking at home, but I was not using good ingredients or organic ingredients or homegrown ingredients. And it was just this year that we put in the garden beds, we did the big garden, I got my vacuum sealer, I got my canner, I, I got the dehydrator. And so everything pretty much that you have seen in this video, I did this year. This is a first year's uh, homesteaders, you know, supplies and, and, and food supply. And as much as it is not impressive, to me it is impressive because I did this in a year and it was all very intentional, very thought out. It was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of changing bad habits and working really hard to establish healthy habits. And you know, I, I think I've made a lot of progress and seeing how much I've made in a year makes me very excited for 2023. I've learned so much. I'm so much better equipped going into this next year with everything I've learned and I have clear goals in mind and I kind of know how I like to run things now and and whatnot so I feel really good about this and I, I the whole purpose of me making this video was yeah you know my channel's new I'm you know our, our we're building a, a new community here so I wanted to just say hey here's where I'm at but also I want to motivate you because I hope that you feel like everything I've shown you in this video is doable because it is if you want to see crazy impressive pantry tours there are plenty of those on YouTube from from really well established homesteaders who have been doing this for years but the whole point of my channel starting where I'm at is that I'm coming to you guys from the very beginning and that's why I'm so excited about this because three years from now when we're still together and I'm still showing you videos you'll be able to I'll be able to look back on this video and say wow look at that look at how little space I had look at how little fresh veggies I had look at how few canned items I had like how was I even surviving you know because three years from now I'm sure this is gonna look very different and that's what's so exciting and that's what motivates me and I hope something like that motivates you once you get started and you get the ball rolling and you start to make progress the only way is up the only way forward is up you, you keep going you keep learning you keep adding you keep growing you keep doing more and learning more and it's you're 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 guaranteed to win you're guaranteed to win so I hope that this was motivating for you this this was a very realistic look at what's possible at least this is what was possible for me my very first year homesteading it could look like more for you it could look like less for you it could look very similar for you but I just want to encourage you today to just get started even if the only thing you have in your freezer is a few bags of green beans um, you know some extra meat that you bought bought on sale some gallons of milk that you bought on sale some butter you bought on sale that's fine just start putting food away you guys that's all that's all I'm saying because food prices are not going down the world is not gonna we're not gonna wake up tomorrow when the world is gonna make sense and everything's gonna be easy again it's not gonna get any better or any easier anytime soon and with the way that food prices are rising I'm really excited to have extra flour extra milk extra butter and things like that put away 
you know, just in case there's a day when I can't get it or I can't afford it, especially lately, the way my life has been looking. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I wish you the best of luck on your own personal homesteading adventure. Be blessed. Bye, guys. Thank you.